front running Quakers. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Princeton, New Jersey. A beautiful afternoon. I'm Brian Dowling, along with me, Bob Cassiola. Bob, we've got the Pennsylvania team going to another Ivy Championship. Five in a row. It's really an incredible thing that they've accomplished here in a short period of time with this program, and they're very confident about today. We talked last week about how to build a championship team with Yale's Carmen Cozy. He said, build it around the defense. They've done that. They're first in the Ivy League. They're first in the ECAC. But they've also complemented it well with a ball control offense. Well, they can control the ball on the ground when they got the quality of back they have, especially a tailback. Rich Camizio, a couple of hundred yards away from being the all-time rusher in, in 10 history. And Chris Flynn, a dynamic football player who creates situations for him, got the quickness to, to get in the open, a pass receiver. They've got all that the quality at the skilled positions, and that's the difference. Well, I've also a pleasant surprise for Penn is the quarterback, Jim Kertricki. He's shown consistency the last few weeks. They've played really well. That's been the problem for Princeton. Brad Hammond has been hurt. When he's been in the game, he's been inconsistent. Might we see somebody else at that position? I think if things don't happen quickly with Hammond, who's an excellent passer, uh, I think we could see some people. Uh, Ron Rogers has talked about the fact that he's got a quarterback on his team by the name of Gary Weissglass, who's a big, strong senior. Hasn't played much, but can run. And I think they'll pull out all the gaps today to try and beat Penn, and we could see another the quarterback if he doesn't move the offense Hammond early in this game apropos of the day after Halloween can we see some tricks from the Princeton offense I, I don't even question that I think we could very well see some uh, added features of the wing T offense options from it and uh, don't be surprised that he comes out with all kinds of formations backs missing and spread all over the place I think he's willing to try that and when you're sitting here playing the best team in the league for five years now undefeated I think you try anything and I think Ron Rogers is prepared to do that well, we'll see who gets the tricks and who gets the treats. We'll be back with the opening kickoff right after this. The Ivy League football game of the week is made possible by grants from Chrysler, makers of Plymouth Voyager, where the pride is back. By the financial professionals at Payne Weber. And by DTE, with DTE MobileNet Cellular Phone Service. A business person's car can be turned into a highly productive office. If we take a look at the Ivy League standings, we see Penn Cornell up top. This is a key weekend for everybody because we've got four teams with two losses. That third loss is really going to knock those teams out of the way. When you consider the fact that Penn has to play Cornell, Penn has to play Yale, Cornell has to play Yale, a couple of things could happen. This game begins it for Princeton. If they win today, they may very well be in it. If they don't, they're out of it. And there's the rest of the Ivy League today. Brown visits Harvard, Dartmouth at Yale. Out of the league, Cornell plays Bucknell, and Columbia plays Villanova. It'll be interesting in the Cornell-Bucknell game, too, because Pennsylvania had a tough time with Bucknell, only beat them by a field goal. We'll see how Cornell stacks up against the same team and, and then give a better idea how they would match up the last week of the season. Number two to kick off for Princeton. Rob Goodwin will put it down at his own 35. Tees it up to the right of the middle of the field. Deep for Pennsylvania at their own six-yard line, number 42, Jim Bruni, and 27, Chris Flynn. A low kick. Tito at the 18. Up to the 30 and 35. Number 51, Tom Gibbs, an offensive lineman, but he held on to the ball, so Penn will put it in play at their own 38-yard line. Very strong offensive line, as we saw last week against Yale. Novoselsky, the tight end, favorite receiver for Jim Kurchicki, the quarterback. Camisio starting to tailback this week. Jim Kurchicki, 6'3", 205, good-sized quarterback. Played very consistent the last few weeks. Pitch to Camisio on first down, cuts it back, and he's out to the 43-yard line. Dean Kane on the stop for the Tigers. Princeton's front four, Ned Elton with a big fumble recovery early in the game last week against Harvard. The linebacking core and the deep back, Dean Kane, number 11, a key man in the secondary. Second down and five for the Quakers. Novoselsky shifts to the tight end position. Gives it Camizio, trips up, keeps his balance, gets over the 45-yard line. Short of a first down, Matt Whalen on the tackle for the Tigers. Oh, 
Interesting on the two first first two running plays of the game. The ball goes to the tailback. Camizio played very little last week against Yale, but he's ready to go. He's had a hamstring pull that he's looking to cut the ball back against Princeton on both carries. You see the record that Prochicki has had as a starter. Very a nice position to play with a strong team with a lot of supporting cast. We got a penalty marker down. Princeton jumps and then the left tackle for Penn also moved ahead of the snap. It appears to me in the first sequence here that Kurchicki is coming over the ball with a couple of options. It looks to me like he perhaps called two plays in the huddle, looked at the defense, and then automatic. Princeton jumping, but uh, they're allowed to move around. They got back. Left tackle for Penn. Ernst. Dead ball foul. Really good. So that will not on the white. The Quakers back to their own 40-yard line, bringing up a third down and eight. Prochikia like Stallone for Cornell, likes to use the long snap count. So probably see a lot of jumping around by the defensive line. Novoselsky in motion. Prochikia in the pocket, short drop. Looking for Novoselsky. Jumps in the head to Kamizian off his fingertips at the 47. He had him open. He's looking for his tight end over the middle, but he's well covered. Pretty good sequence there for uh, for Princeton defensively. They're helped by the penalty, which pushes them back and is going to force Penn to punt the football. But we're seeing a lot of shifting on the Penn offense. Why? Because they like to change their formations and try and mix up the strength of the Princeton defense. Dave Fosnott, number two, will kick it away for the Quakers. End over end. Up to the 32-yard line goes number six, Mark Dexter. Tigers will put it in play. Tom Clark on the stop for the Quakers. So Princeton will put it in play their first series at their own 35. And Behrman at tight end is new for the Tigers up front. Watsink, Fentil, Fichette have been the, the backs for the Tigers. Very and Hammond at quarterback. Very important to note that when you say backs for the Tigers, that's exactly right. They have a left half back, a right half back, and a full back. And they shift those people. They're all running backs in this offense. And basically, they'll all carry the football, and they'll also be receivers. When you look at the receiving core, the backs in the Princeton wing tee all catch the ball. So the wing tee, you really can't go after the, well, you can go after the high school kids who are either a receiver or a runner, but in the wing tee, they can do both. We talked yesterday to Coach Rogerson about the types of things he'd like to do on offense against Penn. We have a number of wrinkles in. Last week, uh, two weeks ago, we threw a, a halfback pass to a, to a receiver crossing, and then last week, we threw the same pass back to the quarterback, and uh, uh, we may have something that if the opportunity presents, uh, we could make it exciting. Okay, we'll see what they do on first down here. Wouldn't be surprised if they throw it at them right away. The reason we have a delay here is the marker that they use on the sideline. Uh, there's something wrong with it, trying to repair it, get this ball in play. There you see it right there. Princeton way ahead in the series between the two teams, but Penn has won the last three years as they have against every Ivy school except Harvard. Harvard's the only one to beat them in that string. This series goes back a long time. 1876 when they first met, 78th time they've been playing. And there we see Ed Zubro, the new head coach, first year, 6-0. Nice way to start. Done an excellent job, Ed Zubro, as the head man here. One of the things I think that's helped him, too, is he was insistent. He helped in the recruiting, so it's really not bringing a new system in and trying to, as Rogerson did last year, really installing a totally new offense for Princeton. So Brad Hammond will start at quarterback. So Ron Rogerson's wing tee. There you see a lot of shifting. Unbalanced line. And to give up the middle. Out to about the 36 yard line. Number 32. Jerry Santillo at, at fullback. Listed as here, Sebastianelli, names we saw last week, and I'm sure Brad Hammond will be seeing a lot. Jeff Fortner, the key man in the linebacking core, and a very experienced secondary for Penn. Second down and seven at their own 35. Give again to Santillo, and he gets close to the 40-yard line. 
brought down there by most of the Penn defense. The fullback is very, very important in the wing T offense. He doesn't have to be a big back. He's got to be quick. He's got to keep you honest in the middle, running that little belly play as we just saw, counter plays, and eventually becoming a receiver on the counter action, the bootleg action. So Santillo has come along as a very fine rusher. He's the leading rusher on this football team with 247 yards coming into this game. It's called a quadruple or a five receivers to the right. The quick drop. Intended for Baker, but broken up at the 45-yard line. A high throw. Tom Flynn on this defense for the Quakers. But the key here is Fortner, number 30, coming from the outside. Comes inside the block of the tight end. Gets right up in the face of Hammond. Forces him to elevate the ball. And also, Baker, the split receiver, as he extends himself to catch it, paid the price. They tried to surprise him. No backs in the backfield that time. I'm sure we'll see more of that later on. Rob the Giacomo back for Princeton. Got a 37-yard average. Deep for Penn. Chris Flynn. Gets it away. Flynn at his own 25-yard line. To the 30. Cuts it back. Out to the 35. Doesn't look like much, but picks up 10 yards. <laughs> There's no way he's going to fair catch it. <laughs> we know that for sure. We saw last week he got stuck in the numbers twice right as he caught the ball but he doesn't like the fair catch so Penn will put it in play Jeff Fortner, a key linebacker for the, for the Quakers Kick some ass. second series will begin at their own 36 yeah, check you on the cutback to Comizio to the 40 and out to the 42 yard line Dean Kane on the tackle for Princeton. Comizio running behind the left side. Scott Ernst at left tackle number 77 and Chris Wilkins number 75 and pulling the lead him up is Marty Peterson 76, 65, 260. You get those people up in front of people and you see the kind of running ability with Comizio. You look up and all of a sudden it's second down and three. We saw them knock Yale's defense off the ball last week when Flynn was a tailback. So they both tailbacks benefit from a Hard, aggressive offensive line. Comizio again. And not much there. Barely up to the 44-yard line. And short of a first down. Matt Whalen in along with number 71, David Rose for Princeton. Again, Princeton running a lot of counter action. Start stepping in one direction, coming back against the grain. That time, the whole left side, led by Whalen, the outside linebacker, stayed at home, made a good play. Penn is facing now third and two with the ball sitting on their own 44-yard line. Flynn comes in for Comizio on third down. Comizio still looks a little hobbled by his hamstring problem. Novoselsky in motion. Rochicki on the roll to the left. Looking for Andrews, and he's got him. Princeton territory out of bounds at the 41-yard line. First down, Pennsylvania. Very interesting what Pennsylvania does with their tight end. He lines up in his normal position. He shifts back. He goes in motion. He'll shift to the other side. But they use him because Novoselsky is such a big, big target and also a fine blocker. Here we see him flooding the zone. They have three receivers to that side. And Princeton playing zone coverage left Rob Andrews wide open. That's the first completion for Kochikia. First down, Pennsylvania at the Princeton 42-yard line. Comizio, cut back, bounces off and down to the 35-yard line. Can't say enough for the offensive line of Pennsylvania. Their experience in that offensive line are four seniors from tackle to tackle. Ernst, the big guy on the left side, that time really made the key block with Chris Wilkins, the left guard. You get those kind of guys getting up in your face on your defensive lineman with a back like Comizio, and Princeton has to depend on those linebackers to make the play. Second down and four, at, right at the 35. The fake pitch, and they give the Clara, and he's down very close to a first down at the 31-yard line. Staying on the ground, surprisingly, just running that football, trying to take possession here, and also to show the authority of their football team by being able to move the ball on the ground. Very close to a first down and a timeout for a measurement. We talked earlier with Coach Rogerson about how he might stop a tandem of Comizio and Flynn. Well, we, uh, we've let the grass grow real long and we've put a lot of water on it. Uh, in all seriousness, uh, it's supposed to be a beautiful day for football and 
we hope we're just going to uh, pin our ears back and go out and, and, and uh, play tough, hard-nosed football and try to get to them and tackle them. They're going to have to do that. They're going to have to get to them. They can't afford to let them break the line of scrimmage. They're too good as far as too strong as far as their running ability once they break that line of scrimmage. They really got to fill the gap against this 10 offense. Pitch to Comizio. And he gets inside the 30 down to the 28. Just power football. Ball control. Really going after them. Figuring they're stronger up front. They can control the line of scrimmage. And up to this point, that's exactly what they're doing. With the type of offense that Penn has, it makes playing quarterback a lot easier. Kochicki has shown he's got the ability. But when you're throwing in running situations as opposed to passing situations, a lot higher percentage. Second down and six at the Princeton 28-yard line. Eight and a half minutes left to go in the first quarter. No score here in Princeton, New Jersey. And Chris Flynn on the cutback. Inside the 20 and down to the 18 for another Pennsylvania first down. The key block again, the offensive line pushing off with the key block by the fullback, Tom Clark. 34 went up in there, made the big hit, and we'll see it right here as he follows. Look at this block by 34. He pulls back on the linebacker. 57 was filling the gap. The middle linebacker, Heisler, and gives number 27, Flynn, the thing he loves to do, cut back. He's always looking for the cutback. With the tandem of backs, Camizio is sort of a round corner cutter, but he's so strong, they pursue when Flynn's in the game, and he cuts back on him. So it's a tough, tough combination for Princeton's defense. First and 10, just inside... The Princeton 20, 10 on the move. They give to Comizio. He's got a block, breaks a tackle. The 10 and out of bounds at the six yard line. Another Penn first down. Coming into this ball game, Ron Rogerson wanted to stay close in the early part. He wanted to hold on defense, perhaps control the ball on offense. He did not want to give Penn an early score. He knows what they're like when they get up on you. And right now, they've got a very impressive drive going. We saw Rich Comizio and his ability to break that thing to the outside. He's got excellent speed and generates it to the outside. Flynn and Comizio seem to be alternating every play. First and goal at the six. The delay to Flynn. Cuts in. Touchdown! At second effort. He looked like he was stopped at the four. Can't say enough about this kid. Number 27, 5'9", 175 pounds, and watch him, once he finds the hole, watch him lower here and put himself in the end zone. He takes on the defensive back, he slips that block, he knows where the end zone is. He's a winner. So Penn on the board, 7.41 left in the first quarter. Jim Grass will attempt the extra point. Kick is wide to the left. So Penn will take a 6-0 lead halfway into the first quarter here in Princeton, New Jersey. A very impressive ball control drive by the Quakers. Here it is from the ground level angle, and you see the cutback as he hands the ball back, and now he sees the seam, and he gets up, and look at, the, look at where his shoulder is. He's down where you can't get a shot at his legs, and he just carries himself at 175 pounds, and he does it all the time. Tremendous competitor. We talked about it last week, but the real impressive thing, he doesn't give the defenders a great shot at him. He's not that heavy, so he's not going to bowl people over. But if you can't tackle him, he he's gets into that end zone. He's got a nose for the goal line. So Penn takes an early 6-0 lead. And Princeton has got to get back into it quickly. Penn becomes more aggressive once they get that lead. Jim Grass will tee it up at his 35, right in the middle of the field. Deep for Princeton, number six, Dexter. And number one, Wasink. Standing at their own five. Grass, soccer kicker. Soccer style kicker. You don't see many traditional kickers left in college football. I think got it, picks it up at the 18. Out very close to the 30-yard line, where Princeton will put in play for their second series. 
for Pennsylvania. Ten plays to mark 64 yards for that touchdown. Very impressive drive. Alternating tailbacks getting an average. He played a very productive back when it comes to putting that ball in the end zone. Princeton with an unbalanced line out of the wing tee to give to Wapsink. And gets up over the 30-yard line. Lifts to on the stop for Penn. Picks up of about two yards. Derek Wapsink, number one, the senior at 5'11", 170 pounds from Knox, Pennsylvania, has been the big surprise for the Princeton offense. He's not a big kid. He played in the wing tee in high school, and he came this year from the defense back to the offense to give them some strength at that running back position. He has really played exceptionally well. Very pleased with his progress. He gives you enough speed to get on the corner. Second and eight, just over the 30-yard line. The roll by Hammond. Pressured. He's going to keep it. And he's knocked down number 65, Dexter Desir, from his nose guard, chasing the quarterback all the way to the sideline. And Hammond's shaken up. Shows you the range of Desir making a tackle eight yards down the field from his nose guard position. The most, the most impressive thing about the Penn defense is their ability to run. They all run to the football well. And you will see Desir coming from his nose position across the field to make that hit. And he gets him right on the shoulder. Brad Hammond still down on the field. Hammond, of course, was hurt. Uh, in the uh, first game of the season against Cornell and missed a couple of games for Princeton, came back after that injury uh, to lead them against Columbia. He's a senior quarterback at 6'2", 195 pounds from Tulsa, Oklahoma. And there is number 10, Gary Wiseglass. We mentioned him earlier. He's a senior at 6'4", 205. He has not played much, but he's got speed and size and could run if they need him. Again, a look at... Hammond taking the hit, and it's right on the shoulder from Desir, the middle guard. And then he comes down and lands on that shoulder as he came back. So wise left in the game at quarterback for Hammond. Third down and two in the power eye formation. Pitch to Chet, and he's backed up back at the 35-yard line, a loss of two. So Penn waiting for the Power toss sweep. Sebastian Ellie and Hippensteel on the stop for Penn. Forcing the Princeton in no punting situation. Problem with the power eye and two tight ends is everybody lines up tight, including the defense. You've got more guys to block. That time unsuccessful for, for Princeton. And Giacomo standing at his own 20-yard line. 5.40 left to go in the first quarter here in Princeton, New Jersey. Low snap, but he gets the punt away. Flynn deep for Penn at his own 32. To the 40. To the 45. Stays on his feet to the 50. He breaks the tackle and down to the 42. There he is, Chris Flynn. Incredible balance. Stays on his feet. Doesn't give the defenders a good shot. There he is. As he re you see him run, he's just got tremendous leg strength for somebody that size. And he's always looking for the cutback before Armstrong, the cornerback and co-captain, makes the hit. So Kochikia leads up his offense, starting at the Princeton 42 ideal field position for the Quakers. Jim Bruni in at fullback gets the call and dives down to the 35-yard line. Pete Milano on the stop for Princeton. Bruni, we've seen in the past weeks, has been the third tailback. That time he lined up at fullback. But we Bruni is a junior. He's at 5'11", 194. He caught the winning touchdown pass against Navy two weeks ago. We have an injury on the field. It looks to be number 77, Scott Ernst, the left tackle, a senior left tackle from Tiverton, Rhode Island. Bruni lining up at fullback. He yeah. has been the third tailback, but Penn had an injury to starting fullback Joe Lerano last week, so it shows the depth and the versatility of the Penn backs, being able to play different positions. And that's been the secret to, their, to their, their attack and also to their success in recent years. They've got depth, particularly at the 
uh, important skill positions, and there they have it. You see Bruni come in as a junior and just run as hard as everybody else, and that's a great situation to be in. Plus, the, the back, it's great for the back, too, because they all know they're going to play, so they even get a lot more out of practice. Andrews in motion. Second down and three at the Crimson 35 to give the Comizio. Tries to get wide and pulls his way down the 31 yard line. Enough for a first down. Kane and Milano on the stop for Princeton. And it, sh it shows the quickness of, of uh, Comizio getting into that hole. He looks fine. He's just taking a breather. Trying <laughs> to get a big mug on TV. Rich Comizio looking to come back. He has not played that much the last two weeks against Navy and Yale, so he's ready today. He wants to get every to make the most of every situation he gets in here. And he's been running very strong so far in the first quarter. Spenjo in motion, tight end, the fake, the look, the throw deep, incomplete, overthrown. He's looking for Novoselsky, that time Penn going with two tight ends. Two tight ends and the ability, the strength of number 85, Novoselsky, at 6'3", 235 to get deep. And here's Krochikia coming off a little play action here. As he sets up, he just gets this ball off as he gets pressure from the backside from Matt Whale and the outside linebacker who is blitzing. And that's what Princeton has to do. They've got to create some situations. They've got to take some chances. They can't afford to have Penn just grind the ball out against them. Come on, Kevin. No, 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 no. Second down and 10. Play action, the roll by Krochikia. He's looking for Novoselsky, and he drops the ball at the 17-yard line. It's very uncharacteristic of the big tight end and Krochikia's favorite receiver. That time he ran a little bootleg action, and the left side of the Princeton defensive line went with the fake. They weren't around, and if he wanted to, he could have run the football. As we know, they don't really want him to run the football. Well, with as consistent as he's been at quarterback, they've got enough runners in the backfield. Dexter Desir and Brad Hammond who collided on the sideline. They're both going out, or at least sitting in the golf cart. Third down and 10, Princeton 31. The draw to Comizio. Going outside, breaks and tackles, very close to a first down. That extra effort, Pete Milano on the tackle for Princeton. You can't arm tackle him. He's just too strong and too quick, and he breaks it, and that time you'll see it here. This is the draw from the I formation. He gets a good block by number 75, Chris Wilkins, the guard. As he breaks it to the outside, he slips the block of Whale in 47, and then he slips the block of 43. The uh, defensive back who came up on that side for Princeton number 43 is Pete Milano. Excuse me, that's the linebacker. And that extra effort got Penn another first down at the 21. Flynn back in for Comizio. And he gets the call. Cuts it back. Fights his way down to the 15. Didn't look like much, but picked up five yards. Both, both guys commiserating. Not really, but at least they're uh, trying to act uh, concerned. But that's Dexter Desir, the fine senior nose guard. It looks like he's got something wrong with his hand or his left wrist. Don't miss him. He's a very physical player in that defensive line. Second down and five. Three and a half minutes left in the first quarter to give the Clark the middle, and he gets about three down to the 13-yard line. They use the fullback in an interesting fashion. He'll carry the ball anywhere from six to eight times a game just to keep you honest. They like him in the counter game, but basically the fullback in the pen attack is a blocker, and Tom Clark has done an excellent job of blocking for both Tamizio and Chris Flynn at tailback. Third down and two, another good running play action down. Possibility for Krochikia. Two tight ends, one wide receiver for Penn. Clark and Flynn in the game to pitch to Flynn. And he drops in the backfield. Brennan for a loss of about two yards. And those are the kind of chances you have to take. They brought the cornerback, Sean Brennan, number 13, up on the line of scrimmage, and they just let him come. And as, commit, as uh, Flynn was looking to cut back, he could not break that tackle. Big play by the, the cornerback, the junior, Sean Brennan. Now he's forced Comizio in a fourth down and four, and Pennsylvania, instead of going for the touchdown here, is looking to get three points out of this drive. Ball be placed at the 22, a 32-yard field goal attempt by Jim Graff who has not been called on to kick many field goals this season. Pick is down, 
And it's right through. So Penn takes a nine to nothing lead with two minutes and seven seconds left to go in the first quarter. Brian Dowling with Bob Cassiola in a very comfortable afternoon in Princeton, New Jersey on November 1st. and getting some of a psychological lift by holding Penn to three points on that drive. Very tough to give Penn the ball in your own territory and keep them out of the end zone, but they are able to, to just give them three points on that drive. And the story now is Princeton's lost their starting quarterback, Hammond. They came with Wiseglass. If they stick with Wiseglass, we've got to see some running in their attack. They may come with the option. They may also come with sprint out with uh, Wiseglass because he is a better runner. He's got four, four, six feet as a six foot four inch, two hundred and five pound quarterback. So we may have, we may see that. And really, this offense has got to get going. They can't afford to let their defense be out there too long against this really strong, not only strong physically but very diversified print, uh, pen attack. They've got to get some offense going here, and they've got to do it soon. Kroczyki has not had to throw the ball much. He's only attempted about five passes. Basically has stayed in good down and distance situations for the running game. Picked by Grass, a short kick. Taken at the 20. 25, the 30, 35, and run out of bounds at the 40-yard line. Number 33, Dave Perina, back up fullback for Princeton, taking the short kick. Not letting the ball hit. Giving Princeton good field position for their third drive attempt at their own 40-yard line. Wise last will stay at quarterback, number 10, also a senior. we got three seniors who have played quarterback this year for Princeton. In addition to Hammond, we also had Sean Welsh, which we saw earlier, who we saw earlier in the season. There's the latest 10 scoring drive in which they got a 32 yard field goal out of Jim Grass. The roll by Wiseglass. Going to keep it across the 40 to 45 and hello at the 47 yard line. There's the, the 45 McConnell. Gave him his <laughs> baptism. Wiseglass has got to be aware of that. He made a good run. They drove everybody off off the bootleg action. But when he comes on this sideline, he's got to protect himself. And he's got to look back. They're not going to take it easy on him. And it's a good hit right there. The one problem a quarterback faces when he tucks the ball and runs, he gets a shot on his throwing arm. and not up in a hurry. And he's pretty much limited to his passing offense. Second down and two. At the 47. to midfield and into Penn territory goes number 41, Craig Fichet. Giving Princeton a first down. You got to get that offense going. Fichet, the big back, the senior back who ran so well for him last year with a 4.1 rushing average thus far this year but hasn't carried the ball that much. They've got to get Fichet at 6'2", 210 to be a part of this offense and that's the kind of running they need on the corner. So Princeton, the first time Crossing midfield and into Penn territory. Has the first down at the Penn 49. A minute and a half left to go in the quarter. Penn ahead, nine to nothing. Unbalanced line again for Penn and Watson with the call. Gets the block, gets two blocks, gets three blocks. He's got some room. A 30, 20, he's going to score. Princeton! Talked about the running ability, the speed of Wasink. They've got an unbalanced line. They caught Penn, did not adjust. They've got an extra man over to the left. They get him on the corner. An excellent block by Barnes, the tackle, and it puts him on the corner. And with his speed, he outruns the secondary. An excellent play, but more importantly, psychologically, a big play for the Princeton Tigers. Rob Goodwin in to attempt the extra point for Princeton, number two. Kick is up, and it's good. So Princeton with seven quick antlered points on 10 field goal, trail nine to seven, with a minute 14 left to go in the first quarter. 
we look at the, the wing tee and they do a lot of shifting and they try to catch you in a mismatch or overbalance and here they caught Penn with an unbalanced line to the top of the screen which gave him an extra blocker and gave Wasink a chance to get on the corner and on the corner he has the speed to do just that to break away from the secondary and we see him out running number 48 for Pennsylvania Paul Franklin who came in at the cornerback position big play big uplift for this uh, Tiger team That was one of the things that Coach Rogerson told us earlier in the season, that he, he was a little short on the speed to go wide. But the effectiveness of that play was that the blockers stayed between, kept themselves between the ball carrier and the blocker and didn't throw too early because Penn's good on defense. They can get blocked, get up, and make the tackle. But if you, the blockers stay on their feet, it gives that back an extra uh, benefit going by them. And we've got an extra man on the field down at the 10-yard line. Checking out Chris Flynn. As long as he checks him out, that's all that matters. <laughs> Doesn't stay with him. Now he's chasing the referee, David Harrison. Or David Harrison's trying to draw him out. We've had him at Dartmouth, and we've had him at Cornell, and now we have him at Princeton. But only in the Ivy League do you get a poodle. <laughs> it's been freshly clipped. Very quick drive for the Tigers. Very quick drive. It took 45 seconds, 49-yard run by Derek Wasink. Three plays, Princeton has a score. Wasink, again, a senior from Western Pennsylvania, Knox, Pennsylvania, 5'11", 170 pounds. He really has been the team leader on the offense. He's played exceptionally well. And that time, he got his opportunity to get into the open field, and there he's trouble. Nobody on Princeton's team will take away that drive, but one of the things that they have to do is keep their defense off the field against those long ball control drives by the Penn offense. But I'm sure they'll take a 9-7 to seven deficit at this point. Good one, the kick, tip, picked up finally by Flynn at his own 15. To the 30, stays on his feet and up to the 35-yard line. Now let's see if that, that tremendous drive and touchdown score by Wasink can lift this defense up. They've got to be more aggressive. They've got to come after this 10 team. They've been laying back and accepting those blocks. They've got to take some chances to be in this ballgame. Princeton took some chances on offense. Let's see if they do it on defense. Penn has really controlled the line of scrimmage in the first quarter. So they'll put it in play at their own 35-yard line. Leading 9-7, first quarter. Chicky on the play action, looking for Andrews. He falls down, he gets some pressure. He jumps at the Comizio, and he's hit by number 57, Matt Heisler, waiting for that dump to the back. Took too long to develop that time. He was really looking upfield. By the time he found Comizio, Heisler, 57, was there. He read the play and made the hit. Here he looks back, and he's just looking to dump the ball off. Big play by the defense there. What happens so often after a big play by, by the other side of the line of scrimmage, it gets everybody going, and Princeton's got to keep the pressure on defensively. Second down and 10. The draw this time to Flynn. 35 to 40. Stays on his feet. Finally wrestles down at the 43-yard line. Matt Whalen and Matt Heisler on the stop for Princeton, but Flynn staying on his feet. And Flynn's ability to find the hole. Little draw play. He looks for that crack, and then he looks for the seam, and he can really accelerate. And when you look around, he comes up with seven yards, and now Pennsylvania has a third and two. And even if they're unable to score, the ability to get a couple of first downs will take the momentum back away from Princeton. Third down and a long two. At their own 42, two tight ends, the pitch to Comizio. And he's got a first down, he's got more right at midfield. Sean Brennan, the cornerback, had to come up to make the play. They ran the ball back into the sideline, away from the field, to the tight end, Novoselsky, and that big tackle, Scott Ernst, who's back in the ballgame, the senior, at 260. You got a 235-pound end, a 260-dock tackle, blocking on that line of scrimmage, first down. Is the end of the first quarter with Penn leading nine to seven here in Princeton, New Jersey. A very happy Princeton crowd so far. 
Well, as we said earlier, they wanted to stay close. They wanted to have a chance to stay in this game in the first half, feeling maybe then they can come with a combination of plays, and that's what they wanted. So far, it's working for them, but Penn, again, on offense, has been impressive this first quarter. Princeton defense has got to do more. Well, we talked earlier with Coach Ed Zubro about some of the pluses of being promoted to head coach. Well, the, the nicest thing for me is, has been the opportunity to remain in Pennsylvania. This is a group of people that I've been very close to over the five years that I was at 10. A lot of these are kids that, that I recruited or was involved with during their recruitment. And when Coach Burnt left, I, I think, you know, I had to sit back and I made a decision to stay at the university as, as an assistant coach for a year if, if I didn't get the job, uh, turned down the opportunity to go to other schools and just, just really wanted to stay at Penn. And so having the chance to stay at the university has certainly been the most most pleasant thing. I, I feel like it's home to me, and, and uh, it's been great to have that chance to stay there. I'm sure he's very happy being 6-0 and at this point of the season. First down and 10, Pennsylvania right at midfield. They give the Camisio off tackle, and he gets about one. Excellent job by Chip Nuzo, the strong safety, number 25, who came up and forced Camisio to break back inside as he did. The support was there. That was a good job by the defense in holding Camisio to a one-yard gain, so it's second and nine at the 49. It's one of the first times that Princeton has really held Pennsylvania on first down. Double wing setup. Clara, the remaining back in the backfield. Kuchicki on the roll to the left. Looking for Novoselsky. Goes for Flynn, and a flag down. Kane got there a little bit too quickly. It didn't look like he had a chance to catch the ball, but Kane tackled him, and that was enough for the official to throw the flag. And that was a tough call, a, a, a tough penalty to take, because quite frankly, he had him well covered. There it is. That's the referee, David Harrison, and we pick it up from the end zone as Krachicki is sprinting to his left, gets his shoulders around, and he's looking for 27 Flynn coming out of the backfield, and you see the free safety, Kane, an excellent football player. He gets his hands on him and just knocks him off. In the first quarter, Princeton had the ball for four, a little over four minutes, Pennsylvania for over ten minutes, and that's ball control. Well, we got to find out where we are, Mr. Referee. Here we go. Pass interference on the defense. 15-yard penalty. Oh, wow. Would have okay. been a tough ball to catch, but it would have been because it would have been on his fingertips, but uh, still in the possibility range. So that's why the flag went down. That's Coach Ron Rogerson. Not happy with the call. He's looking right at the official who made it. They give the Camisio, and he rolls down to the 31-yard line. Number 25, Chip Nuzo on the stop. And other scores with involving Ivy League teams and non-Ivy League teams. It's a Carolina battle. Whoa, there's the, the Hurricanes are getting surprised in the second quarter. Always a tough battle with the Florida State. Second down and seven at the 31 yard line for Pennsylvania. Delay fake to Flynn, set up the screen. He's got pressured and almost intercepted and then complete to Flynn. Number 71, David Rose almost had the interception from his defensive tackle. Flynn still came up with the reception. Came up with a reception for a loss, but actually he, he just didn't want anybody else to catch the ball as we see it here. He is surrounded by a whole host of black jerseys. Excellent coverage there. Pete Milano, the middle linebacker, came from his... Uh, middle position to get out there on that screen they diagnosed that play well and right now Penn is looking at a third and nine with the ball sitting on the Princeton 33 yard line that play was very effective for Pennsylvania last week Princeton taking advantage of looking at the films and you like having a guy like Flynn around as he has a note for the ball for Chickia looking and knocked away by number 43 Pete Milano Again, they're looking in the middle, in the middle to find those crossing receivers, and the only way you can defend against that is to get depth out of your linebackers, and Milano really got back and gave himself a chance to play the football. He got a hand on it. Good job. So Princeton will make Pennsylvania punt it away 
Number two, Dave Fosnott with a 35-yard average, but 17 punts this season inside the 20. And he will look for a high kick. Clemson letting it go and tried to kept that end zone, but unsuccessful. So Princeton will put it in play at their own 20-yard line, only a net kick of about 12 yards. It was a good attempt by Fosnock. He had the right idea. His, his cover man just got in the end zone to make the play instead of getting himself inside the goal, uh, outside the goal line. But it was a good attempt, and that's what you're trying to do, put him deep in the territory. Instead, the ball comes out to the 20, trailing by two points, and back in the ball game, number 10, the senior, Gary Wiseglass. Fullback number 33, Dave Farina, gets about two yards. Farina tackled by the inside linebacker McConnell that time. They try to keep you honest with the fullback. They really haven't been able to break the fullback today, but they've got to do that to keep the linebackers at home to permit the halfback, as they did with Wasink and Pachette a little bit earlier, the halfbacks to get outside. Interesting position on the field here. Conservative area, particularly with a new quarterback, but you can't play conservative against Pennsylvania and hope to stay in the game. Second down and eight. Wise Glass going deep. And he's got his receiver at the 45, number 85, Mark Rockefeller. Familiar name, son of the late governor. Donald Wilson on the stop for Penn, but not before pickup of 26 yards. This is a beautiful execution by the quarterback. He looks left and then turns back right to throw the counter type action to Rockefeller, who from the split end position has just run a fly pattern up the sideline. But he looked left, got everybody to turn with him, including the free safety, and then threw back. Excellent execution. It was right there. Princeton was a little fortunate on that play. Rockefeller and DeFelice almost holding hands, running pattern down the sideline together. But Princeton comes up with a big game. First down at their own 45. To give the Farina and a fumble. And Pennsylvania recovers. That's a tough break, but that's an example of a quarterback with not too much playing action. He never got the ball to the fullback. It looked like he was trying to turn and ride the fullback or hand him the ball, and he never got the ball there, and the fumble occurred. And that's the chance you take when you have an inexperienced quarterback. As we see it here, as he pivots out, he really never gets the ball to him. Is the ball hit the lead elbow. He's got to get it underneath the arm. That's the responsibility of the quarterback. So Penn takes advantage of the fumble. Good field position again for the Quakers. Put it in play at the Princeton, 48-yard line. 11.36 left to go in the half. The give to Flynn. He's got some room outside. He's got a block. The 40-yard line and down to the 38. Very close to a first down. Nuzo and Milano there for Princeton. And the quickness of uh, Chris Flynn on the corner to get him out there. The word we get from the... Uh, Princeton locker room is that Brad Hammond, the quarterback, is having his shoulder x-rayed right at this moment. We do not have a report on Brax, uh, on uh, Desir, the middle guard, who went out with him. Desir, of course, made the tackle on Hammond. Both of them were injured on the play. So Flynn picks up a first down at the Princeton 38. The pitch to Comizio. The 35 and down to the 32. And I'm sure that Ed Zubrow told his offense, we're going to go after him, we're going to go to the basic plays, we're going to run the cutback, the sweep, and get the ball to our two best backs, and that time they just ran power to the right side again, into the sideline, behind the blocking that time of Marty Peterson and Nova Selsky, the tight end. Number 81, Scott Scunjo is in the game as a second tight end. Nova Selsky at his regular tight end position. Gunja going in motion and the give to Flynn. Looking wide and nothing there. It gets just over the 30-yard line. Matt Heisler along with Sean Brennan. That was a good job by the Princeton defense that time because we've mentioned that Flynn is always looking to cut back. Again, we get back to the substitution. On every play now, we see a different tailback. In comes Camizio, out goes Flynn. They use him in, in uh, almost every type of situation. What a luxury that is. You gotta be getting a little tired though, running on off the field, as opposed to just the 10 yards back to the huddle. Third down and two. At the Princeton 29 yard line. Pennsylvania on the move. The pitch. Comizio. 
Bowles down to the 28-yard line, very close to another first down and a late penalty flag. Very interesting as they ran back again into the sideline. We're just trying to get the yardage for the first down. It's going to be very close. We get a late flag here, and this is going to probably work against Princeton. And a poor call for them. They can't afford to make those kind of hits, have a close situation where maybe they stop them for a first down and then have an unnecessary penalty. And that's what's going to happen here. It's going to give Pennsylvania a chance to get a first down deep in their territory. Again, you wonder. They substitute. In the, into the ball game comes number 27, Flynn. Flynn has carried the ball seven times so far this afternoon for 39 yards. Camizio, 14 for 72 yards. Can you, can you sort of key on those guys and know exactly? Not necessarily, because they both are strong enough runners to run on the corner, and you're always looking for the cutback, and perhaps that's what Princeton is doing. When Flynn's in the ballgame, they don't want to give him the cutback. He likes to go back against the grain more, but it's awfully tough to contain both of them. Good ball foul. Personal on the defense. Half the distance a goal. First down. Tough call against Princeton. Coach Rogerson likes his defensive aggressive. It's a very fine line sometimes between that and a late hit. So Penn, first down and 10 at the Princeton 14-yard line. Pachikia on the draw to Flynn. Cuts back to the 10 and inside the 10 to the 9. Matt Whalen. Matt Whalen gave him a shot, but Krachikia can in the trade can take the pad, and he took the pad and fell forward that time. Uh, Flynn did that time for another good game. It's tough running inside. We have a timeout here as the official is saying start up the clock. They didn't get the clock running on that last play. There is Chris Flynn. Statistics show that he is the number one rusher in the Ivy League. That's a pretty impressive statistic when you're playing half the time. <laughs> That's right. Not only that, though, he runs back kicks and punts. He really does everything for Penn. We'll be talking to uh, Chris Flynn as well as uh, Rich Camizio at halftime today. So Jim Krochicki is looking at a second down and six. Just inside the Princeton 10-yard line. Two tight ends. Barr and Camizio, and Camizio gets it. And he's nowhere. Barely gets back to line of scrimmage, a loss of one. David Rose and Jim Soss on the stop for Princeton, stacking him up behind the line of scrimmage. Again, that time, Camizio was looking to cut back, and it wasn't there because Rose, the junior tackle from Brooklyn, New York, got across the line of scrimmage and was not to be blocked and forced him to go down. Camizio does not have the quick feet cutback ability of Flynn. He needs that point of attack hole and then the, the leg strength that gets him the yardage. Third down and seven at the 10. Two wide receivers. Looking quick for Saunders in the end zone. He's got it. Touchdown, Pennsylvania. That is the simple fade pattern where the wide receiver just breaks to the outside and the quarterback puts it over his shoulder. And he just looks up for the football. It's tight coverage, man for man. And Saunders, the senior who worked, has worked for four years with Jim Krochikia, looked up at the right time. It was beautifully executed by Saunders, the receiver, and by Krochikia, the quarterback. Jim Grass, number three, to attempt the extra point. Kick is down, and it's up. Good. Pennsylvania now leads Princeton 16 to 7 with 8.34 left to go in the first half. There's a shot of Saunders. And when you look at this pass, as you do from the end zone camera here, you will see as Krochikia, he just takes one, two, three steps. He puts the ball on the outside, and the receiver fades. He just fades into the sideline, and there it is. Beautifully executed. Beautifully and with not much room. Usually the receiver tries to bump the defender a little bit tighter, so he's got a little more room for that quarterback to throw, but it was perfection with only about a yard to throw that ball in there. Saunders not used that much this year as a receiver. 48-yard drive for Pennsylvania. Eight plays, taking three minutes off the clock. Beneficiary of good field position after the fumble recovery. 
Princeton made two mistakes there. They gave the ball up on a fumble, and they had a very unnecessary penalty on a crucial third down call, which gave Penn an added first down. Those kind of mistakes against this kind of a football team are fatal. Jim Graff will put it down at the 35. Again, short. Wasink at his own 14-yard line. To the 20, to the 25. And wrestled down there by number 97, Bill Coggle. So Princeton will put it play at their own 25, trailing 16 to 7 with eight and a half minutes left to go in the first half. And again, at quarterback comes Gary Weissglass, a senior. First real opportunity to play here at Princeton. He's waited this long. He got a chance because of an injury the senior Brad Hammond who was the starter today and there's Weissblatt as we said he's six foot four 205 pounds got good speed and he can run the ball himself and we may see him try to execute that option as we go along here as Princeton is very much in the ball game trailing only by 16 to 7. A penalty down on a kickoff illegal procedure on Princeton was declined by Pence with pretty good field position for the Penn defense. First and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Gary Weisglass running the wing tee for Ron Rogerson. To check. Tripped up and knocked down at the 29-yard line. 99 hip and steel along with Innskeep. A couple of very active linebackers. And they're not big linebackers. They stepped in this year replacing some real experience that played for Penn last year. Hip and steel is at 6'2", 215. Innskeep only at 6'1", 195. But they all can run and they run well to the football. Second down and six. Back to two-point stance. Looking deep. He's got the screen set up. He's got one sink. He's got a couple blockers. Makes a good move. He's got a first down down the sideline and run out of bounds at the 48-yard line. Well, I think showing some Chris Flynn moves in the open field. McConnell and Fangmeyer finally knocking him out right very close to midfield. He has got excellent speed, and this is very well executed by the quarterback here. Wise glass. He waits. He gets his blockers up in front of him, and watch the speed here and the cutting ability of Watts Sink as he breaks it to the outside. Gets good yardage. So Princeton at their own 49 on the move. Watts Sink, one of the leading receivers for the Tigers, out of his backfield position. Wise glass on the roll. Dumps it and thrown behind number 32, Santillo, well covered by Hippensteel. And welcome to the varsity competition, Mr. Weisglass. That time he took a shot from Lista, the defensive tackle, as he threw the ball. He really paid the price that time, but he's hanging in there tough. You see him looking to the sideline where he is getting, picking up the signal for the next play. Princeton substitutes an occasion, but most of the time they signal their plays in from the sideline. Coach Ron Rogerson and Steve Toshis, his offensive coordinator. Second down and 10 at the 49. The give, the reverse, split in. Got some room in the midfield and down inside the 45-yard line. Number 86, Nick Yakim, from his block position from, from split in. I think it is pronounced Jackham. Yeah, that's a new name for it. But he played last week, and he's got some speed, and he's got the quickness, and that's the kind of offense uh, Ron Rogerson was talking about. They're opening it up. There's a signal going in. The play has been called by the uh, coach just to the left of uh, the coach in the orange, and that is Steve Toshin. That was the reverse. They were looking to break Jackham, who's got a little bit of quickness on the corner. He picked up good yardage, but they're still looking at third and two. Third and two with a power eye formation. Two tight ends. Everybody bunched up. And knocked down back at midfield. Brad Hines on his blitz from his cornerback position. And that was the option. They were looking to come with the option on the corner that time. But the blitz, as you called it, Brian, was there. And that brought Hines inside. They didn't have man to handle him. And the quarterback never had a chance, Wise Glass, to make the pitch or keep the ball. Big play by the, again by the Penn defense. And we saw this Penn defense really do a job last week against Yale. They really can run to the football. 
the problem with that option too was he the quarterback got too much depth he really didn't have an option play you got to keep it close to the line of scrimmage the Giacomo in for Princeton to kick it away <laughs> penalty marker down gets the kick a low kick kicks it away from Flynn and it goes out of bounds at the 18 but we'll have to take a look at the penalty marker I think on the left side we had uh, an offensive uh, player for Princeton jump just before the snap Be interesting to see what Penn decides on this. Taking it away from their premier punt returner, Chris Flynn. Not a long kick, but they're going to force him to kick it again because they want to have they want to have give Flynn the opportunity to have that opportunity to re return the ball. So they're going to push him back and go after it again. Illegal procedure. Offense. Fourth down. That's the referee. David Harrison. He's the referee. The umpire is Robert Hitt. The linesman John Schlayer. The line judge Ronald Johnson. The field judge George Murphy. The back judge Vince Bocanfuso. And the clock operator today, Norman Carter. We've given them all the credit. They wanted to know who they were. <laughs> That's right. We've announced them today. So the Giacomo will kick it from five yards further back. Ball just outside the Princeton 45-yard line. 6.03 left to go in the first half. Princeton trailing 16-7. And Flynn, probably as dangerous as a punt returner as, as a receiver or a running back out of the backfield. Got the whole field to maneuver. And you know, as, as we said earlier, he's not going to fair catch the ball. To kick away, another low kick. Good one to return for Flynn. He drops it and he falls on it at his own 21-yard line. That time Chris Flynn was looking upfield to see where he could break this thing right away. He knew it was a low kick. The kind of loved the return. They took his eye off that football. Some past graduates and some future students here in Princeton, New Jersey. Jim Crochicki at quarterback, the senior. Operating the offense. Keeps us out of trouble, says Coach Ed Zuberow. Just do the kind of things we need with your leadership. Let's execute and get the ball to the guys that can score. The Comizio's in the flint. Comizio, 30 up to past the 30-yard line and very close to a first down. Sean Brennan on the stop for Princeton. But not before Comizio picks up very close to a first down. It is interesting now. Every play, the substitution is being made. Every single play, a new tailback. Before they used to do it in sequence, now they're doing it on every single exchange. Second down and just about a half a yard at their own 30. A pitch to Flynn. He cuts it back. He's got a first down out to the past the 35 to the 38. Matt Whalen. For Princeton. This is the first time we've seen the two tailbacks alternate almost every play. And that's a switch, and I think it's because perhaps of injury and the fact that they've come into this game with a certain running game plan where they feel they just want to keep the pressure on the Princeton defense, and that's the way they're going to do it. Get the car up the middle, and he gets over the 40-yard line. Pickup of about two. Met there by most of the front four for Princeton. Princeton plays a four-man front, four down linemen, three linebackers, and four in the secondary. And they move that front into the gaps or head-on. They do not have a nose tackle. Two defensive tackles, two defensive ends, three linebackers. For Chicky on the afternoon, only three out of eight for 25 yards, but one of those completions, a picture-perfect fade pattern, touchdown to Ken Saunders. Second and seven, fake, the roll by Krochikia. Has wide receiver, number 20, John Joyce, right at midfield for another Pennsylvania first down. Kevin Armstrong runs Joyce out of bounds, but not before he picks up a first down. And you see him, he came on bootleg action to this side, to the right side. By that time, number 20, Joyce has pushed 26 Armstrong off. He was in zone coverage, and he just worked his way to the sideline. Tough to defend against that pass. And it's very tough when you're in a zone. Again, working 
in good field position for the Quakers. Mike Heisey in motion from his flanker position. The roll by Korchicki. He's looking for sight and intercepted. Princeton number 57, Matt Heisler. Korchicki looking for Novoselsky on the crossing pattern. Didn't see Heisler. Heisler took a good drop and got himself in between the, the, the passer and the receiver. Novoselsky is open again. The bootleg action, strong fake to Camizio. Hopeful to draw the linebackers, but not that time. Heisler stayed home, perfectly positioned. Poor pass by the quarterback for Chickie. He really did not give his, his offensive end, Novoselsky, a chance to come open. He just put the ball right into his hand. Coming into today, Pennsylvania, six plus six on the turnover ratio. Princeton a minus six. Today, so far, even. Wiseglass on the fake, on the roll. He's going to keep it. Midfield cuts it back and into Pennsylvania territory, down to the 47. Rick Inskeep trips him up, but and not that, before he picks up eight yards. And there you saw the running ability of Gary Wiseland, as you see Matt Heisler, <laughs> when he took his helmet off. But that was a big play by him to get the ball back for his offense. But Wiseland has the speed to get on the corner, and that time off a of bootleg action, he picked up eight yards. to 47 to give to Watson. Goes to the corner, and he's run down by number 30, Jeff Fortna. And that time they were in an unbalanced line again, and, and Penn adjusted to it, and they got pursued over there. They, uh, they ran the identical play for a touchdown with Watson carrying. That time, Fortner, the senior linebacker from Cleona, Pennsylvania, ran him down. Six foot, 220, outstanding football player throughout his career at Penn with the speed to get on the corner and pick up the tailback, Watson. One of the key factors for the Pennsylvania defense all season has been their pursuit. They really get after that ball carrier. That's why I think Ed Zubra was a little worried today because there's so much misdirection with the wing tee. Third down and two at the 47. Wiseglass stays in the pocket. The dump. Defilete inside the 40. Stays on his feet and down to the 35-yard line for a Princeton first down. Sebastianelli pursuing from his defensive end spot, but not before De Police picks up a first down, down to the 35-yard line. Excellent protection by the line. They finally got to the quarterback, but he got the chance to dump the ball off to his back. And Harvard in the first quarter leads Brown. Cornell ahead of Bucknell. Cornell looking for their sixth win, and there's a big score. Columbia, many, we've waited a long time to see them ahead of an opponent, and they're ahead of Villanova, 14 to nothing in the first quarter. Jim Barnes, offensive tackle for Princeton, shaken up on the last play, still down on the field. That last play, we saw some poise on the part of Wise Glass. He took, he made a strong play fake. He sat and waited for his back, De Felice, to come underneath and get open. And he saw the pressure coming finally, but he delivered the ball right there. And the more completions he has and the more success he has running the ball, the more confidence he'll get as he goes along. There's no question about that, particularly staying with the short underneath crossing pattern. Very high percentage. You can really drill it into the into the numbers a real confidence filler and a great type of play to keep the ball to get first down all i have to do is work to getting a first down and the ball moves up and down the field we're in the second quarter with 223 left on the clock princeton trailing 16 to 7 jim barnes the senior from birmingham michigan coming off the field it looks like it may be an injury to his left leg is lower left leg Barnes is the offensive left tackle Mark Rockefeller number 85 back into the game that big reception earlier for the Tigers first down and 10 at the Pennsylvania 35 yard line just under two minutes left to go in the half by Weisblatt, a quick drop. He's looking for deep leaf off his fingertips at the 12-yard line, and he had him open. He had him open, but he also had quick pressure from the backside again. Fortna, the outside linebacker, was blitzing, and he got to him to where I think he just hurried it a little bit. That play-action pass creates problems. There's number 85, the tight end, Mark Rockefeller, only a sophomore at 6'5", 
three, about 210 pounds with good speed. He's open also, so we may see him come back to that play. He looked open, but you couldn't tell where the center fielder was, and deep, uh, White West made a good choice in staying to the sideline. Second down and 10 at 35. Deep lace in motion. The option. White West keeps and knocks down right at the line of scrimmage. Very slow developing. You mentioned earlier he gets a lot of depth on that option. Well, he's got to get on the corner faster, especially against a team like this Pennsylvania defense. They're very quick to the football. He really doesn't have a chance. Brad Hammond coming back on the field. Obviously, finished for the afternoon. Looks like he's got his arm in a sling. Princeton calling a timeout with 140 left to go in the half. Trailing 16 to 7. Very well played first half for the Tigers, who have been inconsistent most of the season. They're two and four overall, but only two losses in the Ivy League. We had a shot there of the Penn sideline with Gary Steele, the defensive coordinator of Penn, talking to his linebackers, trying to get them in a situation right there. He's talking uh, with Fangmeyer, his free safety, who gives the coverages to the secondary. And number 45, McConnell, a linebacker, who calls the defense. So they're looking at his chart, and he's figuring what they've learned from looking at the films, what Princeton has done in this situation with the ball on the plus 35-yard line. And on the other side, we see Gary Weisslass, the senior, with Ron Rogerson and his offensive coordinator, Steve Tosh, is trying to come up with the play. And as you know, this is all systematized because everybody knows what they've taken off the charts, what the defense usually does in this situation, third down and long in this field position, and what the offense likes to do, so they're playing their, their one, preparation against each other. Right, one question is, would they change offensive uh, strategy with a new quarterback, but probably not with the wing tee? Third down and 10. Two wide receivers, Dexter to the right. Pressure, wide flat, take off. He tripped up down to the 32-yard line, way short of a first down. Bring up a decision. And he immediately decides to go for the field goal. Going to be a long one. He spotted somewhere near the 38-yard line, right on the 38-yard line. And Jim Barks being taken off the field for Princeton. So Rob Goodwin will attempt it from the Pennsylvania 38-yard line, making it a 48-yard kick. Plenty of leg, and just a little wide to the left. He's looking at it a, a little bit long. I don't know if the ball went over the upright or left, but he had plenty of distance. And it looks like Ron Rogerson really questions the call. He seems to think that the, the kick was good. Then we look at it from uh, the end zone camera. Let's take a look at this. Be sure it's long enough. <laughs> I don't know. That looked like it hooked right in there. Oh, that official, Krochikian, first down. Going for Novoselsky, number 57. Man Heisler, all over Novoselsky. I don't think the official had a great angle the one who made the call. Well, you know, he's down there a lot closer, but from the angle we saw it, it really was close. And I'm sure from Rogerson's angle on the sideline, it looked good. Okay. 50 seconds left here, second and 10 for Pennsylvania, and they're running a draw play. Comizio up over the 35-yard line, a pickup of about five. So Pennsylvania looks like be happy just to run off the clock, although they're going without a huddle. They're going without a huddle. And now, you call the timeout. Timeout. 35 seconds left to go in the half. Pennsylvania at their own 36. And Jim Krachicki will go over to the sideline to consult with his head coach to see what they would like to do. Do they want to go for something here? They've got the ball in pretty good field position, sitting on their own 36-yard line. More than likely, if he throws it, he'll keep it short with crossing pattern. In the first half, we see 11 attempts by Krochicki, and it falls in line with what you said earlier about their game plan. They want to execute the run. They want to throw the ball in normal situations. And they have really not opened up the offense today. They've depended upon their running back, Flynn and Camizio. 
He has the ability to throw deep. We know that. Jim Krochicki, he's got a good, strong arm. But in this situation, everybody knows if he's going to do anything, he's going to put it up deep. Ron Rogers going to look at him again in his second year here at Princeton University. Last year, he coached this Princeton team to a 5-2 and two Ivy League record in second place in the, in the league, his first try. An excellent job in his first year. Five. Nobody behind Kochicki as he drops, and he's pressured, and he's sacked. Number 90, Ned Elton. Back Kochicki back to his own 32-yard line, so that will bring in the punter. Fox not for Pennsylvania. And, and Princeton calls a timeout, which is a good call. We see Elton, number 90, the co-captain of this team, making the play. Elton had a great day last week. He was the Ivy League player off his performance against Harvard with six individual tackles, recovered two fumbles, and had one sack. Ned Elton, the senior from Ridgewood, New Jersey. So Mark Dexter will be deep for Princeton. More than likely, they'll send the rest of the team at David Fosnock to try to get that punt. We'll see how he handles the pressure. Standing just inside his own 15-yard line, 10 with three backs in front of him. And they're going after the high snap. And, oh, almost gets it. He got the punter. The flag's down. dexter has got it. He's run out of bounds. But a good attempt by Princeton. No harm in roughing the kicker at this point in the half with only 13 seconds to go. Very close to getting that block. Now we'll see the shot as he comes in. They put the pressure on him. Ten people coming after him. He gets the ball off. And he's hit from the outside, coming in by number 18 for Princeton, Sean Welch, the cornerback. Excuse me. Number 13, Sean Brennan, the defensive back, was there to make the hit. So it pushes the ball upfield. There's only 13 seconds remaining. It does get Pennsylvania. Watching the kicker. First down. It does, does give, if they wish, it gives Krochicki a chance maybe to throw this thing up and see what happens for 13 seconds. Or to even get down the field maybe about 20 yards and attempt a field goal. They've got a timeout remaining, but they're, doesn't look like it from the formation. They've got a deep back, which is usually set up for a fumble. It doesn't make sense in college football since you can't pick up a fumble and run, so I don't know why they're doing that. So that will be the last play of the first half. Pennsylvania, 16, and Princeton, 7, will be returned to halftime activities at Palmer Stadium after this word from your local public station. I didn't, I corrected it to church, but I'm really 